And what I want for people is three things. I want, yes, you double your revenue. I want, yes, that you double your time off. And I want you to be the extraordinary version of yourself that you want to be. Now, what does that mean? Well, one thing, and we talked about this a little bit in the pre-interview before, before we started recording. Yeah. One thing is courage. If you can be 30% more courageous and lean into your fears and practice deliberate discomfort, then um, I believe that is extraordinary because a, a lot of people are living in their comfort zone. So if you are just 30% more courageous, you're already stepping into extraordinary. And then the second pillar of that is, is truth. How truthful are you? We learned at an early age to, to lie, basically. And in fact, psychologists will say this is an important part of a child's evolution. When they first learn to lie, that's showing the brain can do new things now they couldn't do before. But you're telling me my, my kids have br brilliant bl brains every time they lie. Th there you go. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, I, I see. I hear I discipline them for that, but yet I should be praising them. <laughs> well, psychologists, Maybe not say, <laughs> psychologists say celebrate. Yeah. Um, but, but as we get older, I realize that lying because I did something wrong, uh, it's a self-preservation mechanism. So it's, it's important. For example, if, if I'm, I'm at, um, at the U S border, uh, this was before I had a green card. They say, are you planning to do any work in the U S Mr. Wood? No, no. Now I work on my laptop all the time. Of course, I'm going to be checking email and whatever, but if I start talking about that, it might end up, I, I'm denied at the border. So mm -hmm. there are some times when it's useful, it's maybe not noble, but I think there's a lot of nobility in sharing the truth particularly when we could lose something. There's something about saying no at, at the, saying yes at the border. Yes, I'm going to work on my laptop. I'll be checking emails and whatever. Is that okay? There's something noble about that. And so I say, what would it be like if you were 30% more truthful? What if you did something um, that your business partner might be upset about and you've been holding on to it for a, a, a week, a month, or five years, what if you came clean and said, Hey, there's something I want to confess, something I did that, that broke an agreement and I want to make it right with you and check for impact. That's a leadership move. That's a connection move. That's an extraordinary move. And we can practice more truth with our partner. Hey, this, there's, I'd like more touch. I wonder if you're interested in exploring that. That's edgy that, and it requires courage to be more truthful. Yeah. Um, so anyway, lots of examples, but I think courage is one of the pillars of being extraordinary. Truth is another pillar. And then you came up with one before we hit record, which is service. And I think that's true. People who, people who are courageous, we want to watch them. We want to be around them. We watch movies about them. People who tell the truth particularly when, when it looks like there's no reason to, and it's totally scary. We want to be around them. We admire them. And people who have service, Martin Luther King, Gandhi, Mother Teresa, we, we worship them. We idolize them. We want to, we want to be them in some way. I know I do. So, um, this doesn't mean that you should go out and sell all of your items and give it to charity overnight, <laughs> or that you have to suddenly face every single fear, or you have to tell your deepest, darkest secrets to everybody uh, in the next 24 hours. I'm not saying that. That's yeah. why I say, what would 30% more truth look like for you? Take a risk. What would 30% more courage look like for you? And here's a great exercise, Todd, uh, for listeners. If you want to take a piece of paper, and a pen right at the top of the page. What would I do if I was fearless? Not, you don't have to be fearless, but just what would I do? What would it look like in my business? Maybe there's a celebrity you'd ask for an endorsement. I know for, for years I've wanted to interview Alan Alder. I finally got around to pitching him last month. Um, are there 10 prospects you would call for your business? Is there a deal? you want to do with somebody, uh, some alliances, some affiliates that you'd love to have promote your business. 
what does it look like to be fearless? And I recommend having one page for business and a second page for personal. What would I say to my partner if I was fearless? What would I say to my kids, to my friends, my business partner, my, my customers? At least let's find out. And then you might want to go through and just circle two or three that would be a bit edgy, but not over the top. And then if those go pretty well, um, you might take on more on the list.